second scrimmage. Um, you know, I thought today was a little, uh, there was more improvement, I thought, in all three phases. You know, last week, I thought the defense kind of did a really good job in those third down situations. Today, I thought it was a little more evenly matched with the situations we put them in. We got some really good work. Um, our ones are playing at a high level. Still has that, we still have that drop off that you see with the ones and twos. And we feel like we had a few more guys today in the two units that did some things, that showed us some things that we didn't see last week on tape. So that was encouraging. Uh, I thought we protected the football better today on offense. Um, defensively, you know, the big plays were, uh, were minimized with certain groups when they went. And so I was pleased with that. You know, looking at it, at least from the quarterback situation, I thought today both Pig and Piggy and Josh did a really good job, and they both split time pretty evenly with the ones. And uh, I thought they both did some really good things, and I continue to see improvement in Piggy uh, as a competitor, but also throwing the football today, which we tried to emphasize throwing the ball a little bit more today in this scrimmage. Um, Today, Lance took live reps. We actually put him in a live jersey because we wanted to see how he reacted under the live bullets as a true freshman. And, you know, he was able to get some reps in there with the twos and threes, but then we also put him in for a series with the ones where he was in a live jersey. And, you know, he's got some work to do, but he, he also showed that he has some ability to make plays and he'll be a guy that in space will be tough to get down on the ground. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to put him in a live jersey, which we've done, I've done before, especially with freshmen who haven't played because if we have to end up playing him or if he ends up playing for us, uh, we don't want that to be the first time that he faces the live bullets. And I thought he responded the way we wanted to see uh, see him respond. So um, with that, I'll open it up for questions. In coming to the Jack Litch uh, Law Group office, I felt very at ease. Um, I was treated very kindly and I felt that this is the person that I wanted to work with. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. Call the big dogs, the Jack Lynch Law Group. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Any uh, notable playmakers today uh, that jumped out? You know, 83, the receiver, Carrier made some plays for us early in the scrimmage. Uh, DJ continues to make plays as a receiver. Um, you know, Fleet Davis has been really consistent as a playmaker for us. Uh, you know, Tyler Mabry today made a couple catches that, that impressed me. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, I think both corners are playing at a very, a very high level, the, the ball was in the air and Tino defended the ball well in the air, which is something he needed to, we needed to see him do and I thought he, he did that really well. You know, Marcus was out today, played today in the yellow jersey, you know, more for precautionary reasons, but again, I thought both those uh, senior corners did a really good job in the passing game and defending the pass, so it was great to see that out of those guys. What did you see on third down offensively? Was it? We're a lot better. better. I mean, I, I didn't keep track of it. I don't have the stats just yet, but, you know, today's situation was a little more advantageous. Uh, you know, last week, as I said, we put our offense in a third down situation where it's third down and they know what we're doing well. Today we played, uh, we, we put a situation in where it was second and 10 and you play third down. So whatever you got on second and 10 created the third down, which is a little more. Uh, evenly matched and I thought uh, our offense responded well and it was a pretty good battle I think defensively they were able to get off the field a few times I don't have the exact numbers but unlike last week uh, I don't think it was uh, as bad as it was last week I thought it was actually pretty good from an offensive standpoint because we got into some third manageable situations based on how we played second and ten. Does uh, Piggy's improvement as a passer make the decision as to who gonna, as to who's going to be the starting quarterback tougher, and, and how soon do you feel that you're going to have to come up with that? Definitely. I mean, that's to me the, the missing link with him. He's been a guy that's won some games around here. He's been a guy that we know can make plays with his feet. Um, the improvement we've seen in the passing game has been a pleasant surprise. Um, but I'm, you know, 
if you know Piggy, he's such a competitor. I mean, the competitiveness he shows and displays when you bring in guys like Josh and Lance Lejean and then seeing how uh, Tyler DeSue has been playing or had been playing, you know, I think those things are what's forced him to, you know, really work on the things that he didn't do well. And I thought he's made progress from summer to now uh, as a thrower. So I've been pleased and no doubt it makes it tougher because the competition there between those guys has been, you know, it's been a back and forth deal. And it's kind of what, you know, I like. We got to make a decision and figure out which one gives us the best chance to win, which we don't have to do today. Um, and so we'll continue to evaluate it as we move forward. Two just for what? And just to follow up, when, when would you, in your mind, when would you like to, to even if you don't announce it, yeah. when would you like to? I mean, going into our Howard prep, I mean, you know, that Sunday or Monday before the Howard game, uh, you'd like to get a little uh, consistency in the units and have an idea of who that guy will be. And again, you know, I think both guys, Piggy and Josh, have done some good things. I liked what I saw out of Lance today in a, a live jersey and then, you know, Tyler has some ground to make up just in decision making and, and leading the, the offense, which, you know, coming out of spring, I was really pleased with where he was at. I'd say after the last few practices, you know, I'd like to see a little better out of Tyler and Sue, which I, I'm sure we'll get from him. Two scrimmages in. How's the punting situation look interesting? It's been very encouraging. I think both both the punters, both the freshman guys, you know, have has hit the ball well. Um, Unlike last week where I thought we had some protection issues and, and I thought today with the protection was good, we were able to get some, some balls and we, they both made made strides in the punting game. So I feel good about it. You know, we have a lefty and a righty and so, you know, that creates challenges for people and, uh, you know, we're continuing to evaluate it. But I've been pleased with both the freshman punters. It's, Coach, at their uh, corner spots, I know Marcus and Tina are in trench there. How do you see depth coming up? Who's in rising up for that two? We've got a bunch of guys that are playing. Kenny Bennett is running with the twos, and, you know, Vince Flythe has uh, been getting some two work along with, you know, Deontay Banks, the freshman, Gator. I mean, we're trying to figure that out. I mean, we've got a lot of good young players at the, at the position at corner. Um, you know, Kenny Bennett has been a guy that's kind of done some nice things. Uh, he was a little nicked up today. And then I also like the way um, Deontay Banks has looked when he's getting some opportunities to play. Coach, the, I'm sorry. No, I was going to uh, ask you about the uh, thing at the um, Ravens game the other night with Bruce mm -hmm. and, and that whole scholarship thing. Was that, where did you, I guess, come up with the idea for that? And was that, um, you know, how has the team reacted to that sort of thing so far? Well, um, you know, I came up with the idea we were going to go to the Ravens game as a, change up because we do meetings at night. Um, we were able to get it organized to where we were able to get tickets for our team to go up. It happened to be, you know, Darnell Savage also playing there and our players were excited about a chance to get up there to see Darnell. Um, as far as the scholarship offer to Bruce, you know, we've had some attrition with injuries and created some spots for us at the scholarship position. And, you know, Bruce is a guy who this summer, he came to me earlier in the summer and he needed a class to be able to graduate in December, and we were fortunate to be able to find him some aid to help him get that uh, class he needed this summer. And he's a guy in our program that works hard. Uh, you know, walk-ons are the lifeblood of your program, and they're the guys that don't get a lot of notoriety. They do their jobs. They help us and prepare us as we get ready to play opponents. And him being a veteran guy that takes care of his business off the field, he's a good student. He's been a good leader in the locker room, a guy that's really well respected by his peers. And so uh, as I looked at who would be, who I would want to give the scholarship to based off of what they bring to the table uh, from a team's leadership standpoint, he's the guy that jumped out. Um, I kind of kept it quiet, did a lot of research. You know, he's on track to graduate in December, which, you know, has a brother obviously that plays here. So um, I came up with the idea, I said, hey, let's see if the Ravens will put it on the Jumbotron. And then the Ravens were very gracious or gracious enough to say, hey, we can do it even better. We got, we'll got, we set it up so the Ravens really played a part in, in kind of orchestrating it and organizing it. And um, you know, I told the leadership team right before we got into the stadium what I was going to do and that, that I was going to tell them that they voted for him to be the spokesperson so that he would read it off and we were able to get it executed. Will you give any more ships? This camp, like that? I don't think so. You bring in a lot of former Terps and other speakers we've heard. 
when you bring Where a you guy, hear that at? <laughs> just scuttlebutt around oh, here. But when you bring a guy who played here ten years ago, does somebody have to explain to this team who this person is and why they're important to the program? Or do I mean, we do introductions, yeah, with every speaker. We get a lot of different topics in our speaker series that we use in the evening, and you know, whoever the speaker is, we typically introduce them. Um, so. I meant as much like the former players on the sideline. Did they actually get introduced to the team? Does no, they really don't. I mean, they see them. Our guys, we don't bring them up to speak to the team as much. But, you know, a guy like Randy Starks, who hasn't been back here since 2004, which surprised me, you know, he came in and hadn't seen the, the new cafeteria, which has been here, I think, since 2005 when he left. And he was just like, wow. I was like, you haven't been back? And he hadn't been back. And so it's great that these guys are coming back. and. I can remember recruiting Randy and um, how hard of a battle it was recruiting him. But to know that this guy played here, he played 12 years in the league, and seeing his son and his son coming back with him, you know, I think he took some pride in coming back. But it was just surprising to me that he hadn't been back since 2004. So it was good to see these guys back out here. We had a bunch of guys out here today um, for, for the scrimmage as well. So I'm, I'm encouraged that guys are starting to come back around. That's great. I got one more non-football one. Why do you guys wear sweatshirts and hoodies on the field when it's 100 degrees? Well, our players are wearing shoulder pads and helmets, so I mean, you gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable. So for me, I've always done it. I like sweating. I like feeling uncomfortable. Be part of the game. What are you, what are you seeing from uh, Joe Joseph Petrino this year? He's obviously very consistent as a freshman. Didn't have a lot of opportunities to kick any long field goals. Right. Have you seen that length? I mean, it's we have. We have. We actually in, in scripted a situation where we saw him. I talked about it the other day when he hit the uh, winning field goal in a two-minute situation. We wanted it to be a long field goal, and I think it was right at 50, and nailed it right through with a lot of distance to spare. So I feel like, as I said the other day, that he's really hitting it well. Um, he's been really consistent, um, really confident, which is always. You know, that's a plus with kickers, I mean, having the confidence up there. I think just seeing him kick it today, some of the things, situations we put him in today, and seeing him execute was good to see. And the overall health of the team, are there any most banged up. bumps, bumps yeah, and bruises? Yeah, we're, we're banged up, but um, nothing concerns you too. You know, Max Borgen Slaughter is probably out for about eight weeks. We just found out this morning he has a stress fracture, um, so he didn't scrimmage today. Um, got a bunch of guys banged up right now, so I don't have the list over me, but he was the one that most recently, right when I walked out, he got the MRI back from this morning, and they found the stress fractures in there, so he'll be out for some time. Is that the same? Pardon me? Same foot? Yes. Same from foot. last year? Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's his foot or his leg. Okay. So don't quote me that I said foot and it ends but up his leg. But it's the same. Some things, I think it's something to do with the injury he had last year, because I don't know what he had last year, but made it seem like it was in reference to whatever the injury was last year. Yeah. Speaking of the quarterback situation, um, you, know, you talk about the competitiveness of Piggy. Uh, what have you seen from Josh in terms of you know him, him coming off the injury himself and as well as coming into a new system, new offense? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen, I have not seen any signs of him, you know, favoring the injury. I think he's 100% healthy. I know we worked the, this summer to get him into shape because he hadn't done a lot during the spring with coming back from the injury. And like I said, the thing that really stands out with Josh is his composure and how he manages the, the offense and manages the team when he's out there. You can tell that the experience of being a starter, you see it in how the moxie he shows. Um, he doesn't get, you know, doesn't get frazzled or razzled really quickly uh, with all the things our defense has presented to him. I think he's handled it well. You know, I'd like to see him get the ball out a little quicker and make some faster decision, decisions. and. Uh, you know, he's had a, like I said, he and Piggy have both done a really good job and they both are battling it out. It's going to be interesting. Time for two more. Do you feel like the better? Way better today. Way better today. And we put him in some situations where we had to throw the ball and we wanted to throw the ball. We know with our running backs and what they're capable of. We wanted to see us protect. We wanted to see us manage third down. We wanted to see the quarterbacks throw. We wanted to be able to get the ball out on the perimeter and space and figure out this receiver position and get the best three guys out on the field. So 
we've got a lot of good tape to evaluate and make some decisions from. Just lastly, true freshman class, and there are a million things to change, injuries, blah, blah, blah. But when you look at this group, do you think most will play, half will play, only a handful? It's so early for that for me. Um, I couldn't even begin to tell you until I watched the tape today. We've had two scrimmages. Uh, I do see the, at least five to six guys that have been working within the systems of ones and twos that are starting to show out. But uh, determined, I mean, we've got the four games to play them all to try to figure it out. Um, we're going to utilize those games to develop our team and develop the freshmen um, as we see fit to where if we are capable of doing that. So, um, but there's at least a handful of guys that I see based off of the last few weeks of camp that, that, that should be in position to at least provide some depth, if not um, some meaningful workforce. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Greg.